Yo, what's up, guys? Teacher Paul over here, and today we are reacting to this suggestion by Rush Vit. He asked me to uh, react to the states and territories of India. So this is a Geography Now video, and I hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want to send me suggestions, you can go on my Discord. The link is in the description, or you can leave it in the comments down below. Okay, so let's do this. Let's learn a little bit more about India. I also have a specific channel um, that I react to Indian movies. So you can check it out. It's in my um, channel list on my channel. So if you click on my channel, then you can look at the channel's suggestions and you'll see my other channels there. Okay, let's go. Let's learn a little bit more. And always, don't forget to like this video and subscribe, okay? Hey everybody, before we start, this video is sponsored by a good sponsor that we found. One that I actually believe in and personally endorse. Cetera, it's a geography quiz game. We'll get back to it later. But first, as you guys know, this is a filler week video. And by popular request, we are doing the states of India. Now, the thing about India is that okay. it's actually kind of broken up quite a few times since independence from the original 14 states, mostly because of the people groups or the languages, stuff like that. So before we get into this, just keep in mind, I am not Indian. I have never even been to India. So in order to make this video, I had to talk to a lot of you guys I've read a lot of your emails and comments <laughs> and I compiled as much information as I possibly could based off of what you guys the Indian jogger peeps have said so see that's the thing um, I love youtubers that always give credits to their viewers and always count on their viewers for suggestions and things that they don't know that's why I'm always in touch with my audience and asking you guys um, to send me videos because you know because of stuff like this you guys know better and it's nice when you guys show me something about your country so kind of you know if i get anything wrong it's you know kind of your fault so let's just <laughs> jump into it the 29 states and the seven union territories andhra pradesh the capital amaravati now this is an interesting state because it kind of has like the fastest growing gdp in all of india over 16 percent really? in the wow. past few years over here they speak telugu and this guy wrote this play which is kind of considered like the most prominent telugu play in all of indian history otherwise they're famous for the kuchipudi dance one of the eight classical styles of indian dance and uh yeah they have great beaches and caves arunachal pradesh capital Itangar. This is the region that's kind of disputed with China, although it is administered by India. In order to get in as a foreigner, you will need a restricted area permit. Otherwise, culturally, it kind of takes cues from Tibet, you know, the whole like Buddhism thing going on. There's quite a few Buddhists okay. here. People here are super friendly. They're famous for their wood carvings and their carpets. Assam, capital Dispur. Now, if you watch the India episode, you'll know that I talked about the seven sisters in Northeast India. Assam is kind of like the big sister. This place is known for disputably having the nicest tea and silk and the oh, silks nice. are kind of made based off of what they actually feed the silkworms it's interesting they're also okay let me just ask you guys um in india i know that it's a big country with a lot of different states but what is the best preferred drink is it coffee or tea let me know because I, I i saw somewhere that um somebody in the polls, I put a poll up asking if you guys um, have breakfast with um, cereal and milk. And you guys said, no, you don't have cereal and milk for breakfast. And some of you said that you don't even drink milk. So let me know. How do you have your tea? Is it with milk? Is it without milk? Is it, you know, and which one is best, coffee or tea? In my country, coffee all the way. Also known for preserving the incredibly rare one-horned Indian rhinoceros. And uh, the longest bridge opened up in 2017 over here as well. Assam. Wow. It's awesome. Bihar. Capital Patna. This is kind of like the Buddha state. Lots of famous sites for Buddhism. Supposedly they have the Bodhi tree that Siddhartha Gautama sat under. Otherwise on the Hindu side, I was told that they're very big on Ram and Krishna. I was also told that they're very hardworking people. Chhattisgarh. Capital Naya Raipur. From what I was told, this is kind of like a somewhat militant-ish type of area. They're known for producing a lot of coal and they are kind of one of the poorest states. And there is a noticeable community of people that kind of have Maoist slash Naxal ideologies and it kind of clashes with the main Indian government. But otherwise, generally the people here are just nice, but there's just a little bit of controversy, that's all. Goa, okay. this is the Vegas of India. It was a really? former Portuguese colony. And uh, now it's known for having a ton of Russian tourists that just wow. fly and take over everything great like let me just say one thing um i met a guy i think two weeks ago 
who said he's from Goa. And there's also a group of rappers from Goa. And okay, let me go back. The guy that I, I met, he said he's Portuguese. And I'm like, oh, so were you born in Portugal? He said, no, no, no. I was born in Goa, but I'm a Portuguese national. And I'm like, okay. So, you know, it, it makes sense what, um, what he's saying about um, Goa being colonized by the Portuguese. Which is so interesting. I didn't know that. Great beaches, bars, and cool things happening. But the funny thing is the people in Goa, like the actual citizens, are pretty chill and normal. It's just the tourists that give it the crazy vibe. But yeah, Goa. It's like where everybody wants to go to for a vacation. You want to go uh, to Goa. Yeah, yeah. Gujarat, capital Gandhinagar. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is from here. Now this place is famous for a few things. First of all, it's kind of like a desert and they have one of the largest salt deserts in the world. They have this forest which has the last of the Asiatic lions in the world. Oh, I forgot Gandhi was also from here. They are voted the number one ease of business state in India. The people here are very good at doing business and they're really good at trading. Also, it's no cool. alcohol is allowed in this state, but that's okay because they go to one of the union territories that we'll talk about later. But yeah, basically, uh, people <laughs> That can handle but they don't stay without really it. Well come from Gujarat. Haryana, capital Chandigarh, which is shared with Punjab. Long story. Haryana, I was told, is kind of like the rougher, tougher brother of Punjab. It's known as like the wrestling and boxing capital of India. And they have oh, one wow. of the highest male to female sex ratios, like there's more men than women. And this place is famous for having a lot of people that are hired to become bodyguards for other people in other states. Like this is the bodyguard state. Wow. Himachal okay. Pradesh, which has two capitals, the summer one, Shimla. And the winter one, Dharamshala. This is kind of known as the state that hosts the Dalai Lama. But it's actually kind of known as like the beautiful holiday destination that Indians love to visit. It's known as the abode of snow, one of the snowiest places in all of India. Culture-wise, again, they take a lot of cues from their Tibetan neighbors up north. But yeah, uh, cool state, lots of culture, lots of beautiful landscape. Uh, people like to visit for uh, vacations. Jammu and Kashmir also has two cool. capitals. The summer one, Srinagar, and the winter one, Jammu. I have to be very, very careful with this one. Why? Because if you watch the India episode, you'll know that Pakistan and China and India are all kind of vying for ownership of this one area. Basically, the area that is kind of operated by India, we'll talk about. Besides Lakshadweep, it has the highest percentage of Muslims in all of India at about 68%. It wow, used to be ruled that's a lot. under these princely states. And it's funny because like the people here are so nice and welcoming, even though they've gone through like multiple wars. But yeah, it's like the world's most beautiful conflict zone. Jharkhand. <laughs> <laughs> the capital, Ranchi. It's kind of like uh, the sibling of Chhattisgarh. A lot of the people here kind of also have the same Maoist ideology. However, it also does have one of the holiest sites in Jainism. Well, how do you pronounce it? Shik the Shikharji, known for having a lot of minerals that they mine. And uh, famous cricketer Doni. Came Doni. Here as well. Karnataka. Cap M. S. Doni. Um, I saw a trailer about his story, you know, a movie trailer. Um, and I haven't seen any of his, um, best cricket moments. So if you want me to watch that, let me know. I only know that he's a cricketer because of the, the movie trailer that I watched. Now he's going to talk about Karnataka, which is the, the land of KGF. <laughs> if you guys don't know what KGF is, it's, um, the first movie I have ever watched, um, First Indian movie with um, Indian, well, Indian, Indian, not, it wasn't uh, dubbed in any language. It was Indian language, really. So it was the first movie that I watched in, in um, Canada. And it was just an amazing movie. I made a song about it. You guys must have seen it. Um, if you follow my channel, you know it. Then, um, yeah, so it's from, from there. So let's see if he talks about it. I'm so curious. Capital Bengaluru, formerly known as Bangalore. The capital Bengaluru is kind of known as like the Silicon Valley of India. So many IT companies and startups are coming out in this city and they have the lowest unemployment rate in all of India wow. at less than 1%. Otherwise they're known for having the Hampi ruins and uh, they speak Kannada or uh, is that how you pronounce it? Namaskara. I was told it's pronounced Canada, but some people have said Canada. Like, what is it? Kerala, capital Tiruvananthapuram. Tiruvanantapuram. Tiruvanantapuram. Say that three times fast. Tiruvanantapuram. Tiruvanantapuram. This place is kind of famous for being known. Tiruvanava. 
Oh, I can't do it three times. Uh, no, I can't even do it one time. Tiruvanantapuram. Tiruvanantapuram. Tinuvaram paturam. Tiruvanantapuram. Say that three times fast. Tiruvanantapuram. Tiruvanantapuram. This place is kind of famous for being known as the spot where Jesus' apostle Thomas kind of landed and spread the Christian gospel. And today uh, you see kind of like a lot of Catholics and Christians and they all kind of speak Malayalam. A little bit of a tongue twister. Say it with me. Malayalam. It's not Malayam or Malayalam. Malayalam. It's Malayalam. Backwater is a very famous place. And yeah, Kerala is kind of like the state that's like doing pretty well overall in a lot of things like literacy and HDI and all that other stuff. All the other states are like, hmm, maybe we can kind of take pointers from Kerala. Madhya Pradesh, capital Bhopal. The heart of India. The history state with tons of religious and historical sites. You have the Bimbetka rock shelters. You have the uh, Kajuraho temples, which kind of depicts all those, uh, you know, Kama Sutra sexually explicit images going on. A lot of you okay. have told me to mention the Bhopal gas tragedy that happened in 1984. And I was also told that the people here seem to be really big devotees of Ganesh Maharashtra okay. capital Mumbai this is Mumbai the richest state and the second most populous third largest in area it's kind of like the New York and Los Angeles of India it's like the economic Altogether. hub and the entertainment hub Bollywood is over here tons of people flock over to pursue their dreams I mean aside from all that though they do have a lot of like Marathi forts and like historical sites as well but yeah Maharashtra is kind of like the central nucleus that everything kind of builds off of and expands outward from. It pushes okay. India forward. Manipur, capital Impal. This is one of the seven sister states. A lot of the people here, just like all the other seven sisters, have a little bit more of like an East Asian look to them. They're known for having their own distinct hill tribes. Five-time world amateur boxing champion wow. Mary Kom came from here. They're also known for having these cool floating Five islands. Time. Floating islands and boxing women. Meghalaya, capital <laughs> Shillong. This place is known as the abode of rain and they're kind of like the water people of India. These two villages get the most rain in all of India. They have really interesting matrilineal tribes and they have really cool foggy hills. But yeah, cool hill people with their own customs and uh, the water people. Mis and then there's another season in India, right? That you guys sold me. Moon season? Something like that? Moon season. It's a very interesting thing because I, I mean, I only know five seasons, you know. <laughs> Um, so I can imagine that this city gets a lot of, a lot of water, um, especially during moon season. Mizoram, capital Aizal, the land of blue mountains. This is the most forested state in all of India at over 90%. Pretty eco-friendly. They even wow. have eco tours. It's kind of like the Costa Rica of India. The people here are just really chill and they just kind of like sell their handicrafts at the market. All right, so that's the halfway point. Just very quickly before we move on to the next one, just want to say thank you to Setera, our sponsor for this video. Setera is a really cool geography learning game that you can actually... Okay, I'm just going to jump, um, skip this part because, you know sponsors <laughs> we all do that but hey go support him that the tourists come in and so they kind of have to like put on their traditional costumes and put on a show but it's like hey eh, whatever eh, whatever makes us money odisha formerly known as orissa capital bubaneshwar known as the land of cyclones it's also known for being like the isro's launch site for their satellite programs this is one of the three states project mangal probably was over there I'm trying to remember everything that I've seen, um, but the the Indian movie channel that I have has helped me so uh, learn so much about India. But it's really hard to remember everything, you know. And especially this this video, he speaks well. Of course, um, there's a lot to cover, but he talks really fast about every single thing, and it's hard to keep up. Not to keep up. What I mean is it's hard for you to remember every single thing he says about every single state. So I'm not going to remember this um, by tomorrow. I'm going to remember a few things, but not everything. <laughs>
Sects that never broke up throughout all of Indian statehood history. It's kind of known as like the state that bridges the north and south. They speak the Oriya language. They have Oria. an amazing wetland and mangrove park where you can find like tigers and elephants. Probably the most famous landmark being the Sun Temple of Konark, Punjab, capital of Chandigarh, shared with Haryana. Keep in mind, this is only part of the larger Punjab territory, which is also shared with Pakistan. A lot of you guys okay. had stuff to say about Punjab. Overall, a lot of you said that Punjab is probably the most loved state in India, partially thanks to Bollywood. They got really good food, really nice people. They have the largest Sikh community in all of India. They also have the holiest site in Sikhism, the Golden Temple. And there's a ton of forts and palaces like this one. Rajasthan, capital Jaipur, the land of Rajas or kings. It's the largest state in area at 341 square kilometers. It is also one of the states that never broke up. And there are just endless forts and palaces found in this state. It has things like like a camel fair. Supposedly, I was told they have like the best henna artists. Keep in mind, food-wise, they keep things very spicy and it is, at about 75% of the population, the most vegetarian state in India. Vegetarian kings in the sand. Sikkim, capital Gangtok. Now, this is an interesting one because it kind of joins... Also, I just want to say about vegetarians. Um, there are many um, comments in my... I have a shorts, a YouTube shorts, where... I, uh, you know, I, I, I make travel and food videos and then I, I made a Indian food review and then some of you saying, Hey, I'm, I'm vegetarian. So I don't eat food and uh, so I don't eat chicken or meat. And I'm like, Oh, okay. And when I saw another episode about India, I saw that most of you are also vegetarians. I think I saw the Geography Now India episode and we we saw that many Indians are vegetarians. So that's very nice. That's very healthy. India in 1975 to kind of avoid the Chinese. It used to be its own kingdom and these people are very similar to the people of Bhutan. They can kind of generally understand each other's languages. Lots of uh, Tibetan Buddhist type of culture going on here as well. And it is as of right now the most environmentally friendly state in all of India. It is almost completely organic. As in they don't believe in using chemicals or pesticides in their agriculture. Very clean air. They love nature and they love uh, they're just it's, it's kind of like the Bhutan of India. Tommy Okay. Nadu, capital Chennai. Now, if you Tamil. want real, like, South Dravidian Indian culture, you come here. This is, like, straight up the southern capital of India. The main language they speak, of course, is Tamil, which is completely unintelligible to Hindi. They have so many temples, including the largest functioning Hindu temple in the world. Technically, Angkor Wat is a bigger Hindu temple, but it's no longer active, so it kind of doesn't count. Uh, I was told they are big fans of Rajnik Ant. Telangana, capital Hyderabad. Okay, so who is Raj? Ki Raj. He. I've seen this name before. Raj Nikant. I've seen this name before. Oh, I can't remember where though. Ant. Telangana, capital Hyderabad, the youngest state of India. They literally split up from Andhra Pradesh in 2014. I was told it's kind of like the whole, you know, Catalina Spain thing where they're like, hey, we're making a lot of money, but you guys are dragging us down. So we're going to kind of split off and make our own thing. And then Andhra Pradesh was like, no, you can't do that. And they're like, yes, we can. And we're going to take Hyderabad. They're like, no, you can't do that. And like, yes, we can make your own capital. Yeah, messy divorce. Anyway, they're also famous for Tollywood or Telugu Tollywood. Hollywood. And it's interesting because they still kind of retain a little bit of the Persian culture that was brought over from the Mughals and Nizams. You can find it in things like the painting and their shadow puppets. Tripura, capital Agartala. I was told, is this even India? It's like the state that very few people even know much about. It's like all sides of their state are surrounded by Bangladesh. So no shocker, they have a lot of Bangladeshi immigrants. Uh, apparently I was told they like to play horse polo. But yeah, uh, I think out of all the states, uh, they are kind of like the biggest anomaly. It's just like the mystery state. State. People probably come here to hide out and avoid the authorities when they're on the loose. <laughs> I'm just, I don't know. Just... Uttar Pradesh, <laughs> capital Lucknow. This is the Taj Mahal state. And it's kind of like a, oh dang, where did that baby boom come from? You guys just like exploded in population in the past few years. And now it is the most populous state. It's also home to Varanasi, one of the most famous cities in the world for Hinduism, Jains, and Buddhists. And uh, yeah, a lot of fertile land over here. Lots of spices and agriculture happen in this state. Very key important player in all of 
India, you cannot have India without Uttar Pradesh. Uttarakhand, capital Dehradun. This place actually has some of the holiest sites in all of Hinduism. It has the Jim Corbett National Park, beautiful mountains. Again, I was told these people are super nice, very welcoming. And I was specifically told to tell you guys that Urvashi Ratala is from this state. West Bengal, capital Calcutta. I don't know who she is either. Guys, okay, here's the thing. I have a music channel for India as well and a movie channel for India. And I haven't seen um, these artists yet. So if you guys want me to react to them, let me know in the comments because I haven't seen them yet. Is from this state. West Bengal, capital Calcutta, or Kolkata. They changed the spelling. This is the last state that never broke up in all of India. Technically, if you consider the fact that it broke up from East Bengal, which became Bangladesh, but yeah. These people are kind of also known for having some of the best sweets in all of India, and they're also known for having some of the best literature and academics. Some of the greatest minds from India, like this guy, came from here. They're also known for being very strong devotees to Durga. Sweets and academics, West Bengal. Now we reach the Union Territories, the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, capital Port Blair. This place is known for being home to one of the last uncontacted human tribes on Earth, the Sentinelese. You are not allowed to visit their island. It's also home to India's only volcano. Chandigarh. Now this is interesting. It's the capital of both Punjab and Haryana, but it's also a Union Territory in itself. Basically, this was a planned city that was built because they gave Lahore to Pakistan. And it was kind of made to be like a model of affordable housing in India. It's a, it's a new city city. Dadra and Nagar Haveli and Daman and Diu. There's the interesting thing. Gujarat, like I mentioned, does not allow alcohol. Maharashtra does. So where do they meet in the middle? These Union Territories. These places are kind of known as like the places where both states can kind of join together and have a beer. And uh, Daman and Diu, I think it was also Portuguese, wasn't it? Yeah. Lakshadweep means a hundred islands. Basically, in a nutshell, the majority of people here are Muslim and they're very similar to the people of the Maldives. So you find a lot of atolls and a lot of people living on these narrow sandbanks and they have like an island culture. The capital territory of Delhi. Keep in mind, this is a separate entity from New Delhi. But yeah, uh, this is kind of basically where all the politics go. It's a lot, go it's a lot. <laughs> the worst drivers in India, I was supposedly told. And even though they are a territory, that is they still very have their own legislative assembly. It's, it's though. weird. But yeah, busy people, making laws, causing controversy for the rest of the country. And finally, Puducherry, capital Pondicherry. This is the French speaking area of India. Wow. Here you can also find Auroville, the hippie village, where all the people kind of came together and they wanted to make their own utopia, but then there was a little bit of controversy, but yeah, it's, yeah, look into it. But yeah, French speaking Indians. And that is that. Once again, thank you to you guys, all the Indian geography peeps that wow. helped me out with this video by giving information. I hope I got most of it right. But yeah, in a nutshell, India has so many different types of people groups and languages and cultures and traditions and customs. It's like you can't summarize it all in one video. And obviously this one didn't even scratch the surface. But for what it's worth, beautiful country, and I'm so glad and honored to have done this video thank you stay cool stay tuned wow that is very informative but uh, really fast for you to remember every single thing and you gotta watch it so many times so that you can actually acquire knowledge about india because man as he said at the end india is uh, it has so much you cannot learn it in to uh, learn india's history in two minutes you know it is really something. But hey, I really love... I am really enjoying um, Indian content. And here on this channel, I have showed um, you guys um, how many people watch the channel. So I get 1 million views per month. And 1%... No, wait. It, it has gone up. 3.5% is from India only. So, yeah. Let's get um, a little bit more of Indian content here because, as I said, I'm really enjoying it and I'm sure you guys are going to enjoy it too. In any case, if you're not subscribed, click that subscribe button, like the video, and I'll see you on the next one. Let me know in the comments what you want me to react to next and take care now. Bye-bye.